I'm here today with Maggie Gentry, and the reason I found Maggie was I was I was curious who else is out there who's thinking about like conscious marketing, and I googled conscious copywriting, and Maggie uh, was one of the top folks who showed up in the results. I really liked her website, and um, just said, "Hey, let's have a conversation about this kind of thing." So anyway, Maggie, welcome. Thank you for for doing this. Thanks so much for having me. I'm yeah. really thrilled to be here. Yeah, and there were there are so many topics we could talk about. Um, one of the topics that we brainstormed, which I think will be relevant to a lot of people uh, mm -hmm. watching this, is um, about niching down versus not having to. So um, just to set the context a little bit here, I have a lot of um, kind of heart-based or visionary um, entrepreneurs in my audience. Um, and uh, I, I guess I would include myself in that. Uh, I don't know, I'm not sure if I'm visionary, but certainly try to be heart based. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we have lots of ideas, lots of passions or interests or kind of divergent, what seems like divergent mm -hmm. um, areas that we could offer as, you know, top content and services, etc. And mm -hmm. we get so uh, maybe sometimes we get discouraged when we hear from marketing or business experts that tell us that we have to focus on one tiny niche in order to be successful. Mm -hmm. um, this is true whether we're talking about content, like, oh, we don't focus on one tiny, tiny piece of thing, uh, area, no one's going to remember who you are, you know, or uh, in terms of uh, services, like, oh, you don't want people to think of you as a flake, or you want people to think of you as an, ex an expert. And that's if you focus on one tiny, you solve one tiny problem for one, one, person in the world you know, kind of thing. And so I'm really interested to know what your take is on that. Mm -hmm. uh, you help people with copywriting all the time and copywriting. Well, so, uh, you know, you know, you know, marketing really well. So let's talk about this. What's your, what's your yeah. take on this? Yeah. Thank you. Um, I feel very strongly that we uh, don't have to niche down. And I think that that's something that um, is controversial because I, you know, I see that languaging around niching to be really limiting. And I think that it's also, it can be effective for certain business models, but for the folks that you and I are working with. So I also work with largely service-based providers. Um, and I would classify them as multi-passionate humans. So folks who are extremely creative and they might have a few different ways in which they want to show up and share their work. And so I have had many conversations with potential clients and, and clients themselves who feel really frustrated by some of that where I think they get, um, they find themselves really stuck because they feel as though they have to put these boundaries around themselves or these parameters around themselves that don't allow them to show up in their truest, most authentic self way. Um, and so for me, what seems to be most important is the energy that is felt when you create something. So whether that is a piece of content or whether that is showing up for your clients on the call or in whatever way that that might manifest. So if we can find ways to just ignore the information that is not for us and rather find what is our truth and if we can live our truth. And so we are evolving beings, right? <laughs> And I think that there's something about this idea for me, at least personally, with the idea of niching that feels so restrictive. And so if I am to be this evolving human, then I want to create a business that will evolve with me. So naturally, there's going to be some growth and some change. And yes, people might think that is flaky, but I would argue that it's like the heart of what I'm offering is the same throughout. It might evolve or morph slightly as I evolve and morph, um, but there's that through line of that truth that is through everything. So that that is my my hope is for 
each person that I work with, it's like, what is that through line? What is that truth? What is that foundation that you want to be known for with your work and focus on that rather than it having to be a super specific, I only do X for these particular people. And it's a very just, you know, concretely packaged offering. Um, but I'm, I'm also a Gemini son. So it's like, I like, I think I like to have these kind of <laughs> yeah. different things. Well, I think, yeah, I think that is going to be resonant with a lot of people watching this. So I, I love hearing that. That's a, that's certainly a healing bomb for, mm. for, for that, uh, this pressury thing about um, once, you know, solving one problem for one person, but let, so, so the through line, I really like that. And I think this is where a lot of people get stuck. It's like, that's true, Maggie. I have these multi multiple passions. Now, how the heck do I write my homepage? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or, 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 or how do I describe what I do? Right. Like that's mm -hmm. a, that's a broader question. And so, I'm sure you work with us all the time. You're a copywriter. Um, so, what is your guidance for that? Like, how do I describe the vastness mm -hmm. or the diversity of what I do? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, you know, practical way of saying that is how the heck do we write our homepage? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, I mean, yes, copywriting is something that I do and my background is in marketing. So I always kind of bring this like overarching viewpoint yeah. to it. Yeah. Um, and so what we're kind of getting at is the philosophy that I, um, have created is something called own your why. And so this, idea that it was very much inspired by Simon Sinek and his start with why. Um, and it's really, it's adjusting it slightly and then also kind of seeing it through, but I want to bring it back to without going too far off on that tangent, I want to bring it back to your question about homepage copy. So I would say that that through line, that truth is your why. And as far as writing homepage copy, the kind of formula, if you will, that I follow is start with your why. And then the reason for that is that um, your why statement is going to be something that's big, bold, that is that visionary statement. I like to think of it as this like shout it from the moon to all of us down here statement. So that what happens when you land on your why is that you are touching heart to heart. So it's something that's so big that might not have it might not make much logical sense, but we are breaking through the normal um, and typical kind of categorization that our logical brain wants and really trying to meet people in that heart space. So coming, starting off with that why, following it up so that at least if we just have our like mind and heart blown wide open by this phrase, then following that up with a what, so then allowing yourself and your brain to then say like, okay, wait, what was that? Oh yes. Now I can know like how to categorize that. So we go why, and then what, and those generally are going to be a few sentences. So maybe it's one sentence for the why one or two sentences for the what, and then you leave the rest of the homepage to tell us how you do that uniquely. So you can also think of it like, the why is your philosophy and the how is your methodology. So walking folks through like what it will look like for you to actually work with them. Um, I mean, case in point, if you go to my website, my why is right there at the top of my homepage. And so it's, I believe where there's truth, there's strength. And nothing in that says anything about what I offer or marketing yeah, at all. It's, yeah, it, it could be. I can imagine that as it's an inspirational statement. Uh, mm -hmm. It could be on various companies, websites, or organizations. I like that. Yeah. But it's, and, it's, it definitely inspires right away. Right. And it's like, that's that through line. So it's like in whatever way that I engage with folks, I'm always trying to reflect back to them, their truth. I'm always trying to help them understand what is it that they want? Like, where is their, um, desire coming out in everything that they're doing, because if we can live as the creators, 
So if we are able to create what we want, it's that, again, going back to that energy, that felt sense of being really enthusiastic about what we're creating, that is felt on the other side of the screen or the audience or whatever it is that we happen to be creating. And so there's a confidence and there is a strength in that. Um, yeah. So that's how it all ties in. I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, I wonder if we could play with this uh, mm. and like I'm going to just bring an, an imaginary example in here and then I wonder you know we could kind of play with what what the home page might look like for this kind of service provider and uh, you could of course bring in your your own examples too or you want to add to this one so let's imagine somebody who well they don't even know what to call themselves um, they're gonna are they a life coach are they mm. a, a spiritual healer are they um sort of like a you know consciousness mentor what what Okay, mm -hmm. but what they do is, I mean, then of course they have multiple modalities. They might, they might use like human design. They might use um, trauma informed coaching. They might use, you know, parts work. They, they might have various things they've been trained in, but maybe what essentially they do is they love helping people free themselves from the inner critic. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's mm -hmm. just say that. Mm -hmm. what, what could you imagine like I said, they have like at least three different modalities that they mm -hmm. could attract people with, or they have, uh, well, this inner critic thing could be applied to so many different areas of life, right? And so many different areas of work or relationships, et cetera. But what, what do you imagine that homepage if we were just playing with this idea? What, what, mm -hmm. what, what could the, what could the why sound, sound like? And again, yeah. I, I'm putting you totally on the spot. We didn't no. even prepare this at all, but we're just playing here. And I'm just trying to give the audience a sense of what the distinctions are between the why, the what, and the how. Sure. So what, what might the why sound like? Sure. So um, I find it really helpful for, you know, anyone who happens to listen or watch this. Um, when you're coming up with a why, if you're journaling or even meditating, just starting with, I believe, and then allowing yourself to free write and complete that phrase. So and you can always take that I believe out if you would like. Um, but what came to mind as you were sh sharing this example, and it feels like a little, you know, this would have to be for the client that maybe is a little, um, a snarky is coming to mind. And I don't think that that's exactly correct, but someone who's like, um, yeah, I'll just say it. And then you, you can, can see, play like, with what, this. Yeah, yeah, you can, you, you, you yeah. get to add to who this person is that we're playing with. So absolutely. Right. Yeah. I mean, go, I just feel like this would not be like my personality to say it this way, but it might be something like, I believe, exactly. like, you know, it might be, um, I believe like your inner critic is not the boss of you, or I believe like it's time to show your inner critic the way out. Or, um, I believe it's time to like put the, your inner critic in the back seat. Um, so something like that, and that was going off of what you mentioned about, um, trying to like free themselves from the inner critic. Yeah. So, yeah. um, that would be an example of that's cool. a why statement. So yes. if we did like, you know, um, I believe your inner critic is not the boss of you. Yeah. Um, and then you can say something like, that's why, um, you know, through my, and it can, it's a really helpful branding exercise to even what you're talking about. Like this person doesn't even know what to call themselves. Right. Exactly. So it's like, yeah. I call myself a thought partner, which is a mm. unique term. Yes. And the reason for that is because it's this distinct phrase that I do think really gets at the essence of what I do. So I, another part of the process that I would encourage this client to do is really come up with um, a phrase that feels uniquely, a uh, uniquely like them. I think you said consciousness mentor, which I hadn't heard of before. I just literally came up <laughs> with that, but I'm, yeah. I'm sure there are others who, who call themselves that or something. Yeah. But it's unique enough. I mean, yeah. it could be something. So it's like, you know, so that's why through my consciousness, like mentorship, um, mm -hmm. I use human design and parts work and trauma informed, yeah um coaching, therapy or coaching yeah, yeah sure. to support you in xyz like what is that end goal like mm. uh you know stepping into more freedom yeah coming into yeah. your authenticity right um and then you can say like that would be the what and then getting into the how is going to be um you know so do you typically do this through a, like a certain series of months of a program, or do you have a program that you work with people? Um, sometimes 
I have clients where they don't really have a set program, but they've got tenants or touch points that they walk their clients through. And sometimes it's a circular process so that, you know, they might have a client where they touch on all of those tenants in one session, but then the next three sessions, they might be kind of stuck on that step one again, once they get to that next phase of kind of, of the work. Um, so that would be something is just defining like, what is that process for you? I, I really like this exercise because it shows my, my uh, audience here uh, a little, just a little bit about how you work and, and hopefully some of them are like, oh, I want to do this with Maggie and, <laughs> and they could, uh, they could book some time with you to, to talk oh, thanks, about this. And, um, so this is really good. Okay. So we don't have to niche down and this is helpful to under, help us. And you know, what we talked about this far is like, okay, we can envision what the homepage might look like. Mm -hmm. you know, if we, if we don't, so, so let's say, let's, I'm going to give you another challenge here. What if somebody, mm -hmm. like you said, multi-passionate and let's st stick with the existing imaginary service provider who is, um, you know, consciousness mentor or something. Yeah. Yeah. Let's say that they also do acting coaching mm -hmm. or they, they, they have that experience and that they, they maybe would like to bring some of that in, in back, back in here. Mm-hmm. How, how would you, how might you shape the homepage as a result? Now I'm throwing you, I'm th throwing you like a, like a curveball here. Mm -hmm. It's like, we've already written the homepage. I mean, our, in our little five minute exercise, but let's say that now they want to bring their experience uh, in, in the acting world into, in, into say why I, you know, I want to bring some of that back in. Mm -hmm. What, what could you, what, what could you imagine the homepage to look like if we were trying to showcase <laughs> this multi-passionate and and i could all even throw something else in there what if they also are a painter mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they want to let the visitor know that that's also a thing of theirs yeah, yeah. What, what 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 could you imagine the home page to look like at that point well i mean i i think my i would have some questions first yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> right, right. um you know, if it is about bringing in the acting coaching, is it that the acting coaching background is another element there that they are bringing into their consciousness mentorship? So similar to parts work and trauma informed coaching is the acting coaching just an added element. So that would be perhaps a rewrite of the philosophy of the how, but it might not necessarily be a whole separate offering. If this person, however, wanted to keep the consciousness mentorship separate from the acting coaching, then that's also an option on the homepage. Um, you know, again, it's like that's where um, there would be a slight tweak to that how, of course, but, you know, I um, it can be really beautiful. I love things uh, in threes on websites. And so it could be something where um, if the homepage up until then. So if we say the why, what, and the how is more, I don't want to say vague in a, in a negative sense, but vague in terms of it can encapsulate and speak to the consciousness mentorship, the acting coaching, and then also the painting. So there is a way to talk about the person's entire philosophy that infiltrate and touch on each of those. And then the homepage could have something about, um, I explore this Currently, I explore this in three different ways, consciousness mentorship, acting coaching, and through my painting. And so then those could be three links to three separate pages based on the person who happens to be viewing the website. They could kind of choose their own adventure from there. Yeah, I, I, I love this answer because actually that was my intuition about it too. Like I could just see the homepage being yes we might start with a bold and inspirational statement something maybe maybe now that we're adding these in we wouldn't need to say inner critic we would just say you know the statement might be 
you can be whatever you want to be or something like that. Like that's, mm-hmm. that's like bold and it could apply to, you know, any, and then it's, it's, a, we have these like three sections on the homepage or the or mm-hmm. vertically or horizontally. It's almost like three different like worlds that they can yeah. click into. Right. So, yeah, I mean, this is great. I, I love this. <laughs> I, I hope that this is being, I'm, I'm being inspired by the possibilities. <laughs> and uh, it's funny because I literally am on the verge of, I, I'm going to try this out. For a long time, I'm like, oh, I would love to do like spiritual coaching or something like that. Mm. So as of this recording, I'm I'm on the verge of exploring. I'm going to launch a spiritual coaching program. Amazing. And it's not going to be, you know, about business or marketing or whatever. And uh, and and I'm going to see how that works. But but so I, I, too, am, you know, kind of walking the talk of like niche. Who needs a niche <laughs> you know? right. or not? Not that who needs a niche, but it's like. I believe that the energy, that's just like you said earlier, the energy of connection between me and my ideal client mm-hmm. is, um, you know, it, it's, it's, it, it's, it can't be described necessarily in, in specific words, but it comes through, I call it the energy signature. So anyway, this has yeah. been great. And I, I, I hope that people um, get inspired and, and kind of contact you about uh, playing with their their niches and their areas as well. Um, so, so we we just have a few minutes, and I um, I want to ask you one more question regarding this. So, do you uh, you know since we're talking about the website and 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 stuff, you know, people often say you have to be really persuasive, mm. you know, in your sales page. Let's say now 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 the visitor has clicked on the consciousness mentoring. Now they're looking at that service, for example. Mm-hmm. Um, what is your take? I mean, just briefly about getting the visitor to buy or to sign up mm-hmm. <laughs> and tell us about your, your viewpoint on that. Yeah, goodness. I feel like we could talk for so much longer on this and there's more coming up of what we just shared, but um, in the essence of time, I mean, I, um, I feel like it is our responsibility as business owners to really honor the nervous systems of those people that are in our audience. And so even though traditional marketing has been that of using psychology and persuasion and manipulation and sometimes tacit, sometimes overt coercion, (laughs) I am vehemently against it. So my recommendation would be whenever possible, yes, of course, share openly, share honestly. So if you have a particular enrollment period, you want to make sure that you're clear about when enrollment closes. And I just don't think that we have to go so far as to having um, countdown timers and buy now and register today and all these exclamation points. And to me, it's just like, we have to acknowledge that our world is also on fire And there is a lot that every individual person is navigating at this particular moment. And I don't see that changing. And so, yes, what we have to offer the world is important and a value. And yes, I want your work and your creations to be shared. And I think if we can do that in a way that is invitational, that is consent-based, that is... um, really gentle. I, it, to me, that just feels like as a consumer, it's like this massive sigh of relief. I appreciate it so much more. Um, and so those are the people that I continue to go back to again and again, is those people that feel like they understand that I am a human and not just another site visitor or another click or another open rate, you know? Um, so that to me is really important is that we consider the actual human beings who are coming into our sphere. I love that. Essentially, like we care about the experience that they're having on the page yes. as they go through the page itself. Well, it's interesting because I think the traditional copywriter and persuasion marketer cares about the experience of making sure they feel the pain and then they see the you know, the hyped up solution. And it's mm-hmm. like, oh, I, I have to buy this now. Otherwise I'm mm-hmm. going to miss out on this. Essentially that's the experience that the traditional marketer cares about. Yeah. But we Share care the about the, ex- right. <laughs> You're right. Like, like we, we care about the experience of connectedness. Mm-hmm. I understand you. I care about you. And 
if it feels right, let's do exactly. something, right? <laughs> exactly. And that's why, you know, I always think it's like, we have to honor that our audience is, they are autonomous, beautiful, wise beings. They're just like us. And so I think that giving the person that same level of choice of like, if you're feeling drawn to this, if this is calling to you, if you feel the tingle in your heart, this is for you. Language like that can be really welcoming rather than by now, <laughs> that pressure yeah, filled. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much, Maggie, for the work you do and the way you do it. So um, you have a, uh, at this time of this recording, you're generous to offer people a 30 minute um, virtual office hour uh, mm -hmm. for free. And tell us about that. Yeah. 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 Um, ever since I started my business, I've always had these virtual office hours. So they're always available. Um, and it is a time for us to connect. I've had them where it's just like we're swapping cat photos. Um, I've had some where it's, you know, people come with their list of questions that they would like to have um, answered. Sometimes it's just um, exploring the idea of a potential referral partner. It kind of runs the gamut. So um, yeah, I just encourage if, if something if something was sparked for you during this conversation, like I would love to have a, a, a further conversation. Um, so those are always available. Mm. Thank you so much. And of course the link is in the notes of the video below, above, wherever you're watching this. And uh, yeah, check out Maggie's website. Um, it's, you know, is part of the reason that I invited her here because I felt it was giving that experience of gentle connection, inspiration, you know, and uh, so wonderful, wonderful uh, what you've done there. And well, is there anything else you want to leave the audience with? Final words of uh, encourage, encouragement, send off, anything like that or anything else you forgot to mention? Oh, goodness. I don't think so. I just I'm honored to to be here. Thank you for including me. And thanks to the universe and the Internet for bringing us together. I love how yeah. it does that in those beautiful ways. So yeah, totally. Really absolutely. Grateful. Thank you so much, Maggie. Thank you.